In the last episode of Soap, Chester broke the news that he's in love with the minister's daughter. And while it didn't break her spirit, Jessica threw him out of the house. Bert, because he only has a short time to live, is trying to break a record, but might wind up breaking his neck. But he hasn't broken the news to Mary that he's going to die. Eunice has been cheating on Dutch and might get her head broken if he finds out. And Polly's family met the Campbells, and nobody broke any records in getting along. Confused? You won't be after this episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates, and these are the Campbells. And this is so. Twenty and one. For the record. You sure this guy caught 120 quarters? It's what the book says. Stand back. You ready? Yeah. Hey! Go! <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. This guy caught 120. I caught one. I got 120 on the floor here. Bert, what are you doing? Told you, man. I'm trying to get into the Guinness Book of World Records. Well, what happened to the balloons? They kept breaking. Hey, how about this? Spitting. Oh, I'm leaving. Bob. The longest distance spit, 31 feet, one inch. Well, that guy must have had some kind of cold. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Look at this one here. Wait. This guy dove 40 feet from the Flatiron building into a child's waiting pool filled with 12 and a half inches of water. <laughs> Man, where are my trunks? Bert, are you crazy? No, man, come on, I really want to do this. Why? What for? For the baby, I told you, I'm doing this for the baby, so the baby has a father really to be proud of, you know? Bert, this is insane. You cannot dive off a building. What if you miss? If he misses, he doesn't break the record. <laughs> if he misses, the baby has no father. Bert, stop this, okay? You don't need to do this. Oh, yeah, man, I do. I need to leave my mark. You want to leave your mark? Then how about diving off the slide iron building into no water? <laughs> Boys, would you excuse us, please? I'd like to talk to Bert alone. Hey, Bert, uh, how about the first guy ever to survive the decapitation? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bert. Look, I mean, I don't believe this. Look at this. This guy ate a bicycle. An entire bicycle, man. This little French guy. Bert, I want to talk to you. The ties alone must have taken a month to chew. Bert, put that book away. Maybe I could eat a moped. Bert. Come on, man. Bert, what's wrong? You took my book. No, Bert, not that. What's going on with you? You have been acting so strange. How am I acting strange? Do you want to dive off a building and eat a Mercedes? That's not strange. If I had a car, I'd have to be an economy car, huh? <laughs> Bert, please, talk to me. What's going on? Man, I told you, I want to do something that makes me special. Oh, Bert, you are special. Yeah, well, to you, man, but what about the rest of the world? I want to be special to the whole world. <laughs> to the whole world? Would be nice. Come on, man, listen, I want you to be able to open a book someday and read about me. That way I'll always be here. Bert, I'd much rather have you here in person, okay? <laughs> Yeah, well, man, you're not always going to have that. I mean, some days I could go to work. <laughs> and then all you have to do is open a book and you're reminded. I don't need that. I'm reminded all the time. Yeah, but uh, other people, what about other people? Other people might want to read about me while I'm at work. <laughs> Come on, man, the baby. Come on, the baby might want to read about me in a book someday. The baby will dribble all over the book. Bert, listen. Dribble? They do that. Dribble, dribble, that's it, man. I'll dribble. It's not very becoming, Bert. <laughs> no, a basketball dribble, the longest basketball dribble, man. You're a key. Danny, a basketball. This is the big one here. Bert, stop it. Now just stop it a minute. 
Something is wrong. I can feel it. There's something you're not telling me. No. <laughs> Bird, I know you. What's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I swear to God and hope to die. Oh, true. <laughs> There, nothing. It's wrong. Nothing. 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 Okay, Bert, here's a basketball. What are you gonna do? Swallow it? <laughs> Open the door, Danny, please. Count. One, two, three, four. That's a good boy. Now you go to sleep, okay? Hey, Corinne. Hi, Dutch. Is he sleeping? Eh, not a chance. He needs less sleep than I do. Here, I made these animal crackers. <laughs> oh, Dutch, how sweet. Oh, look at them. Look, a dog. It's an elephant. Where's his trunk? Here. Oh, and this is a cat. A cow. It looks like a cat. That's because it's sitting down. It's a cow sitting down. See? Yes, of course. Yeah, for you and, uh, and little Timmy. Oh, good. Timmy will have one and I'll have 30. <laughs> Thanks, Dutch. Hey, hey, you're welcome. I had fun making them. Dutch, is something wrong? No, nothing, nothing. Oh. Yeah. What is it? I don't know what to do, Corinne. I don't know what to do. I've thought about it and I've thought about it and I don't know what to do. What do you think I should do? Well, it would help to know about what? Eunice. Oh, Eunice. Your sister. Yes, I know. I caught her with another guy, Corinne. And she promised she'd never do it again, and I should believe her. I'm supposed to believe her. And there's no reason not to believe her. But I don't believe her. <laughs> Would you believe her? Oh, well, let me see. Would I believe her? That's a good question, boy. Yeah. Would I believe her? She's never home. Never home, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. I can't ask you that. You can't rat on your own sister. Hey, I I'm sorry, Corinne. You just forget I asked that, okay? It's just that I guess I needed somebody to talk to. You know, I ain't got nobody to talk to. Oh, Dutch, you can talk to me. I want you to know that you can always talk to me. Thanks, Corinne. I just might not be able to answer. <laughs> Corinne, can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you find me stupid? Dutch! You are one of the nicest people I know. Oh, come on. No, really, I mean it. You're good and kind and loving and not at all stupid. In fact, I'm, I'm proud to know you. Gee, thanks, Corinne. You just can't make a cow. <laughs> It's gonna happen tonight. <laughs> it's gonna happen. And it's gonna be right. Uh, George, aren't you ever going to sit down? Just making things perfect, my pet. Uh, you'll have to hold it all the time I lost the bottom. <laughs> Well, we've been married an hour. <laughs> and I can't wait another moment for you. Mm, I'll say. <laughs> you shot out of that chapel like a sprinter. I barely got out my valves. <laughs> <laughs> You're so large. <laughs> Sorry about Mexico, my sweet. We'll go there next year. You want to kill that drink so you can put the glass down? Well, I don't know why we can't go to Mexico now. I mean, it is our honeymoon. Oh, don't be silly, my little chrysanthemum. If we went there now, we wouldn't see anything. All I'd see is you, and all you'd see is the ceiling of the Acapulco Hilton. <laughs> George, I hear a knock. Mm, the pounding of my heart, hummingbird. No, George, I think it's the door. Don't you hear it? Listen. There. Woodpeckers, get back. 
It's probably a woman from your past. Don't be silly, precious cargo. There's no woman from my past. Really, George? Not anymore. Mm, I get it. Well, what? Dressed like that, it's probably the plumber. And he's Greek. One look at you, he'll attack you in the hall. No, I'll get it. You slip into something less comfortable. <laughs> Another woman, indeed. Why, there's only one other woman I was ever remotely in love with, and she's married. A million miles away. Hi. And here she is. <laughs> Jess. George, how are you? Oh, Jess, how would... George, George, George. Oh, Jess, I mean, <laughs> speak of the devil, wait... Uh, plumber, Ola Salina, sir, Retsina, Uso, uh, Osaka, Olives. George, I have something to tell you. I have something to tell you, too. Are you happy to see me? Happy? <laughs> <laughs> well, may I come in? In where? Oh, the apartment was sure. Come in, come in. Stand right there. <laughs> you like a potato chip? George, I really must speak with you. Jess. I love you, George. Oh, Jess. I know, I know. If I had chosen you in the first place, I wouldn't have to come back here in the second place. But now I have a second chance to make the choice I should have made in the first place. And it's not too late for a second chance to make that choice. Oh, George, I love you. I really, really love you. And I never stopped. Oh, George. I was so foolish to ever think that Chester or any other man could love me the way you do. I have this. I hope you still do. Oh, George. My George. Oh, Jess. Oh, Jess. No, George, not now. <laughs> we have plenty of time for that later. We have the rest of our lives. I got... I know, you got rejected. But, darling, he was my husband, and I had the children to think about. Okay, but... Oh, I'm so happy. There's so much we haven't done. And now nothing can stop us. Nothing, nothing, George, I... Oh, well, yeah, that, that might stop us right there. George! Uh, 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 oh, George, uh, you needn't be so embarrassed. I mean, you didn't know you were getting me back. Perhaps I should leave for an hour. Hmm? Come back? <laughs> yes, it's a little more complicated. Than that. How do you do? I'm Jessica. George? Uh, uh, Jessica, this is Shirley Slotnick Donahue. Your sister? Of course. <laughs> I should have guessed you had the same slippers. <laughs> no, uh, Jess, Shirley's my wife. I'm sorry. Uh, not that you're my wife. I mean, I'm sorry that you were... Oh, never mind. Oh, Mrs. Donahue, please don't be angry with George. He had no idea that I... Excuse me, I... I think I'd just like to go. Uh, Jess, wait. Pumpkin, could we have a moment together? George, this is our honeymoon. And this is my friend. Just five minutes. No, Shirley, don't leave the room. It's not necessary. But uh, Jess! No, no secrets. That's a bad way to start a new life together. I think I should just go. Are you okay? Perfect. Jessica, please stay. I'll go for a walk. Thank you, Shirley. That's very nice of you. You're a very lucky woman. He's a fine man. Take care of each other. Goodbye, Shirley. Goodbye, George. He's a lovely girl. He's a lovely boy. They're a lovely couple. Lovely. We should be thrilled. 
I know. I'm gonna shoot myself. <laughs> Give me the gun when you're done. Jessica, th this is Rose Coleman, Polly's mother. This is my sister, Jessica Tate. Hello. <laughs> Sit down, Jess. <laughs> Tea? <laughs> so, how are you? <laughs> oh, Jess, what is it? <laughs> Would you like to be alone with your sister? <laughs> Are you depressed? <laughs> oh, Jess, I'm sorry. It's amazing how they can learn to read lips so easily. <laughs> I was saying, it's amazing how well you read lips. <laughs> she doesn't read lips. Well, she seems to understand everything. She hears. <laughs> Then she's not deaf. No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> then you are mute. <laughs> then you are deaf. <laughs> what are you? She's depressed. <laughs> then she can speak. Yes, right, Jess? Oh. She can speak. Say something, Jess. <laughs> it's okay. I believe you. You don't have to. It's all right. Say hi. No, it's all right. It's all right. Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry, but when I get depressed, I, I can't speak. My lips get sealed shut. Rose and I are kind of depressed, too. Oh, about what? Polly and Danny. That's what's depressing you? Well, yes. <laughs> and that's what's depressing you, too? Well, sort of. <laughs> she does this all the time. Watch. Her depression will be bigger. Much bigger. <laughs> I just came from Detective Donahue's. See, my husband had amnesia, and he got lost, so I hired Detective Donahue to find him, and what he found was that Chester had died, so I had an affair with Detective Donahue, and we fell in love, and then Chester came back. <laughs> of course, not from the dead, because he never was really dead, and then I had to choose, and I chose Chester, which was a wrong choice, because Chester chose to play around, and he left me for the minister's daughter, so I went to Detective Donahue's to tell him that I was his, but it was too late. He's hers. <laughs> His wife's. My husband's gone off with a young woman. The man I love is married to someone else. My children are all grown. I've lost everyone. I'm alone. <laughs> all, all alone. She did it again. She topped me. She always does that. She always has one better. Thanks, Dutch. No problem. Ah! Did I scare you, sweetums? How dare you, Dutch, sneaking up on me like that? Sneaking? You want to talk about sneaking, Eunice? Let's talk about sneaking. What are you talking about? You don't know what I'm talking about. I have absolutely no idea. How's the Hong Kong Gardens for starters, Eunice? It wasn't me. You had the sweet and sour pork, he had the chicken lo mein, I had the mugu gai pan, and it wasn't very good. There is a perfectly good explanation why I was there tonight, Dutch. I was having dinner with my girlfriend. That was a guy. That was my girlfriend, Barbara. Barbara has a beard? Glandular. 
Eunice, I followed you all over town. That guy was no lady. You scoundrel, you absolute scoundrel. You've been spying on me. Yeah, that's it, Eunice. I've put up with just about everything from you, but that's it. I've had enough. What are you going to do? 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 I'm not going to do nothing, Eunice. I mean, we could yell and scream and lose control, or we can sit and talk like two intelligent people. You know what I mean, Eunice? Control. That's what separates us homo sapiens from the lower forms of animal life. Dignity and control. Dutch, I know just how you feel. That door is always getting stuck. It makes me so mad. Oh, I'm getting out of here! I'm not through with you yet, Eunice. You stay away from me, you monster! You two having a fight? No! That's dangerous. Throw this. <laughs> I can't stand it. You always spy on me. You never take your eyes off me. You are driving me crazy, and I'm getting out! Not that. I just had it fixed. <laughs> Nothing, dear. Get out of the line of fire. <laughs> what happened to the refrigerator? Isn't that nice? Now you can see inside from everywhere in the world. Any casualties? No, Daddy. What did they hit us with? Sixteens? Buzz bombs? No, sir. No, I'm afraid it's my fault. Who are you? Dutch. Prairie crackers. If you're Dutch, you'd be on our side. Uh, no, sir. You see, I'm not Dutch. I'm Dutch. I see. All the MPs, the man is a loon. Well, I just came down to get some formula. Where did you say the refrigerator door was? Right there. Oh, fine. Good, I'll come with you. It's a perfect time to clean the butter bin. I can't help it. I'm a little jealous. And I don't know what to do. Oh, Dutch. Do you... You love this guy? No. I just feel trapped, Dutch. I'd never been as close to anybody as I am to you. Before, when a guy got too close, I always got scared. I always ran away. I've always been afraid of being hurt or being dumped. Dutch. Oh, Eunice. Oh, I love you so much, honey. I wish I could believe that was true. It's true, darling. It's true, and I... I just hope you can forgive me. Oh, hey, hey, I'm hey, so hey, afraid. Hey, there, sweetheart, everything will be fine. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> will Bert tell Mary he's going to die, or will he wait until it's too late? Will Bert be able to break a record before he dies? Will Jessica get over her depression? Will Rose and Mary get over theirs? Or will they all depress each other over and over again? These questions and many others will be answered on the next episode of Soap. Soap is videotaped before a studio audience.